So we saw what we needed to see, an actual fight, an actual boxing match. Um, Sean Porter didn't disappoint like I thought he was. I picked Danny Garcia to win. I thought um, Sean Porter would come in and bull rush the whole fight like he normally always does. And I figured Danny Garcia would be able to put something together and be able to um, pretty much outpoint the guy and um, put him away. You know, maybe catch him with something, you know, so uh, catch him with something and put him on his butt. But <clears throat> Sean Porter did what I suggested that he should do in my review. Um, if you guys saw it, not many people saw it. I didn't really post it the way I should have, but it is what it is. But um, I put in there that Sean Porter needed to work with somebody from the outside. And that was before I even saw what was going on in a training camp. But I figured he needed to work with some some outside help. Get somebody in there that can actually show him how to set up the jab, uh, utilize the jab to set up his combinations. And uh, hold on one second, guys. That TV is loud. One second. So, yeah, he needed to uh, get with somebody that could help him set up his combinations, that could help him box, that could help him move, that can help him slip punches and be defensive. And that's exactly what he brought into the ring tonight he actually looked like like I told my brother he looked like the Sean Porter of old like when we first started watching Sean Porter become Sean Porter when he actually captured his first title that's how he looked he was he was moving off the jab he was slipping punches he tried to turn Danny Garcia he was going to the body he was going to the head um I mean, it was nothing that he didn't he didn't put together tonight. So I was very impressed with what I saw. I thought he would resort to his old tactics. And he did from time to time, but he did it the right way. He stayed on the outside for the majority of the fight. He brought the he brought the fight to the inside. He did everything he was supposed to do. He roughed him up when he needed to rough him up. He kept Danny Garcia off of him, and he kept his punch output very low. His output is already low as it is, but he kept it even lower by not giving Danny Garcia a steady target. Danny Garcia is a guy that walks on the tightrope, coming straight forward. And um, he, was, he wasn't really able to, to do much to Sean Porter. It's like I told my brother earlier tonight. Um, Sean Porter, no, Danny Garcia, he, I mean, his game plan was to, and I thought that he would utilize it earlier. I thought that he would turn Sean Porter coming in. When Sean Porter would come in, I thought that he would maybe turn to his left and catch Sean Porter off balance and be able to throw a shot to his body and be able to follow that up with going back to the head and then setting everything up behind the jab later. So if he would have did that, he would have had a better shot at keeping control because at no point did he ever have control to me throughout the entire fight. He didn't have control throughout the fight. You know, he, he couldn't control. He couldn't do it round by round and he couldn't do it for the entire fight. So... What I saw from Sean Porter was Sean Porter was dominating the first two rounds. I gave the third round to Danny Garcia. Fourth round went to Sean Porter. Fifth round could have been a swing round. That could have went either way. So who would you give it to? More than likely, it would probably be Danny Garcia. He came out of the exchange with a little something. Sean Porter roughed him up in the sixth and the seventh, in my opinion. Round eight, a little sloppy. Round nine. Kind of in between, uh, round 10, Danny Garcia, round 11, Sean Porter, round 12, Sean Porter. Or you could have said uh, 10 and 11 was kind of in between-ish, and you, and you would still come out on top, really, with Sean Porter. So let's recap. Sean Porter, 1. Sean Porter, 2. Sean Porter, 4. 5. Danny Garcia. Six, Sean Porter. Okay? Seven, Sean Porter. Eight, Danny Garcia. Nine, like I said, could have went either way. Danny Garcia. Ten, Sean Porter. Okay? Eleven, could have been either way. Danny Garcia. 
12th round, Sean Porter. So, I mean, in my opinion, Sean Porter was just in control from the get. He was in control from the get, from the start. And it was no slowing him down. He knew what he had to do in order to win. And I said that if he would have came into the fight with the bull rush mentality, he was going to lose um, on a decision because nobody wants to see. It's not even that nobody wants to see it. It's just that you can't score as concisely as you want to score because his, most of his punches are muffled. They're hitting the sides of arms. They're um, hitting underneath the hitting underneath the chin, the, the jaw, hitting on the top of the head. Nothing is solid. Nothing is concrete. You can't really see the damage to the punch output when you're in the clinch on a consistent basis and you got your head in, in some guy's chest the entire night trying to prove that you actually won the fight because you roughed him up. That's not, it's not even that, that's not what people want to see. It's just that you can't clearly judge a fight by seeing a guy fight like that. By seeing him do that, what, what are you doing to the other guy? Now the other guy's coming out of the exchanges with the nice uppercuts. Boom, your head is jumping back. Only thing you doing is grabbing and holding and grabbing and holding and pushing and shoving uh, and, and hitting every now and then, throwing a low blow and you look tired, you know, you look exasperated in the fight. So nobody, nobody wants to see you fighting like that and then you complain about the outcome at the end. So he didn't really leave anything to the judges and that's why it was a unanimous decision. I thought he and, and his dad... His corner did an excellent job with preparing him for the fight. And I hope he looks like that in, in the rest of his up-and-coming fights. Because if he does, that gives us more competitive fights. It gives us hope that the welterweight vision is going to stay on top. And that, um, like I said, it's going to be that much more competitive. And you don't really know what the outcome is going to be in boxing should he continue to fight that way. Because all he has to do is... Add a little bit more to his his arsenal as far as more pop on his punches. Because when he's slipping and he's coming out, coming out of the slip, he needs to come underneath and, and throw the uppercut, come underneath, hook. He'll be, I'm telling you, that dude will look like, like a little Mike Tyson, like a tiny Mike Tyson. If he has more, more edge and more pop on his punches, more zip, more control with his place punchment. Place punchment. Um, his his um, punch placement. So if he does that, man, he can uh, he can really hurt some guys and and he can change the welterweight division for a while. I still don't think that he could beat Errol Spence, but I think that he would he would give Errol Spence a hard time, um, like a Bundu did Keith Thurman. It would look like that, but I think it would be a lot harder if if. Um, Sean Porter actually fights the way that he did tonight, he would actually be a lot more competitive. But com him being competitive and him actually beating uh, Errol Spence is, is a whole nother story. So anyway, man, I'm at the eight minute mark. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I hope y'all catch the fight. If you haven't caught it already, go ahead and catch it. It was an excellent fight. I'm very happy about the outcome. I'm not disappointed in any shape, form, or fashion. Uh, boxing won tonight, and so did the fans. Anyway, I'm out of here. Peace. Y'all have a good one. Holla.